well, you worked your whole life for this. It's it's yours, and we have to use it to take care of you first. Hi, this is Jerry Pletica with Touching Hearts at Home. Today, we have an awesome referral partner on um, our Zoom today, and she is from Advanced Home Health and Hospice. I'd love for her to introduce herself, and go ahead. Hi, guys. I'm Tiffany Vargas. I'm the Outreach Director for Advanced Home Health and Hospice in Northern Idaho. Great. And how long has Advanced been around this area? Um, Advanced actually started in Idaho. Our first building was in Grangeville, but as far as Port Lane goes, our building was built six years ago. Oh, okay. um, home Health's been five and then Hospice three years ago. Okay. And tell me what sets Advanced apart from maybe some of the others in the area. Um, it's in the nation, we are the only company that does the rehab facilities. So we, it's a SNF license, but they're all short stay um, under your Medicare uh, transitional. And then we have the home health and the hospice. And they did that model on purpose because after building the buildings, they realized, hey, these people need some help when they go home. What are we going to send them home with? Typically, unless somebody goes to outpatient therapy because they're able to drive, they go home with home health or hospice. Okay. And can you tell me what the difference between home health and hospice is? I mean, I know I get that question a lot as well. So how do you differentiate the two? So the way I explain it to people when I talk to them, because I, I am the you know person, the, first, the liaison, couldn't think of the word, for both home health and hospice. It's, you know, what are your diagnoses and which way do we think you're going to go? If you're going to go this way, we're going to get you walking farther, stronger, healthier. We're going to look at home health because we do all the therapies. If we're thinking this way, we're going to go hospice because we're going to treat your diagnoses or, you know, keep you comfortable, but not push you to be better. We, you know, if you have Parkinson's, ALS, dementia, a lot of those cancer and you're not treating it everyone knows you're going to slowly go downhill. And so we just want to keep you comfortable, get nursing, social work, CNA, chaplain out. So care-wise, it's very similar minus the therapy and the push to get better and says the push to stay comfortable. So if you're on hospice, can mm -hmm. you seek out therapy or you can't? No, we, you can contract with therapy. Um, the big thing with hospice is that you don't, tr you're not actively doing a life-saving treatment. So if you're on dialysis or going through chemo or radiation, you do not qualify for hospice. Oh. The fantastic thing with us having both departments, we can subcontract and pay um, out of what Medicare pays us for hospice to have a therapist come in. It won't be those pushes for distance, but we can have like occupational therapy come in and do grab bars and all of the DME type of equipment, um, splints. A lot of the therapy does splints if you start getting contractures, those kinds of things. And, and we can guarantee it where other hospices have to subcontract with another company and kind of be at the will of them. Mm -hmm. Ours is all the same company. We all work together. Very cool. So what are like three questions you get on a regular basis regarding hospice specifically? Um, the coverage. So like I said, um, you don't get coverage if you even have dialysis because they say it's a life sustaining, but we do cover the majority of your meds. Um, they might change them. Some of the blood pressures and things like that, they'll change to a more reasonable price medication instead of the $600 a month thing that a lot of people get. Wow. Yeah, it, it's crazy. But so Medicare does have us make changes, but we do cover the majority of them because it's keeping you comfortable, even if it's not keeping you alive per se, like um, thyroid medication, you would be uncomfortable if you stopped taking that after 40 years. So we cover that. We cover the durable medical equipment that I talked about, you know, occupational therapy, um, therapists helping with beds, wheelchairs, grabbers, even the side tables that come with hospital beds. We cover that for you for home health or excuse me for hospice and then oxygen. So the coverage is a big thing, um, which leads to a second question. Then people are like, well, where are we going to live? Or, you know, are you going to put me inpatient? An inpatient hospice house 
which we have in town, but you know, it's not affiliated with advanced, but we're able to transfer patients to as well is truly for the actively dying. You know, it's that last 10 days of life that someone goes there. It's not used as an assisted living. Assisted livings are private pay. And that's, you know, the the question, where am I going to live? Who's going to take care of me? Or if it's a child, who's going to take care of mom? You really only have two options and that's you're going to take care of them or you're going to pay someone such as your company to do it. I mean, that the state, a lot of people say, well, I have Medicaid, our Medicaid list for caregivers, assisted living, those kind of things, especially in Kootenai County, is 100, maybe 500 people long. You're never going to get those benefits into a facility. It's just, it's like winning the lottery. So I always tell people, I'm like, those, those are your options. If you can take care of your mom, great. If you can't, then you're going to have to put her in a facility, you know, sell off property, things that... A lot of our elderly don't want to do, they want to leave something for their family. And I I often have to explain, well, you worked your whole life for this. It's, It's yours and we have to use it to take care of you first. 